Are we going live? We're live. We are live. This is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Holy shit. Guys, I'm back. I'm back doing the lives. Haven't done a live since, uh, since last year. <laughs> uh, no, but but seriously, happy to be back for a, uh, for, for a bit of a live stream tonight. Um, fun fact, it's my birthday today. Currently... 26 years old in some hours um but yeah i was i was just sitting here um right before this little live stream this wasn't planned it was just off the cuff um because i was working on um my project brew the beer that i have to produce for the end of this semester um as is sort of the final big project uh for the brew masters course I was sitting there, I was reading uh, an email from uh, one of my teachers uh, who actually follows his channel. Uh, thank you for that. Um, his recommendations on a couple questions that I had. I have some more questions for him. I'm going to email him about it. But I was trying to formulate this beer recipe for this Project Brew. And what I'm looking at for the Project Brew, just to just to give you some context, because I'm seeing if anybody watching or watching past this has any ideas um, on where I should go with this, but I'm planning on brewing a white IPA. Now, what is a white IPA? Personally, I really had no big clue as to what an, a, a white IPA is, um, or, or was, or is, you know, um, but apparently it is sort of a hybrid between a, you know, an American IPA, hop like an American IPA, but with a, uh, a Belgian wit, um, you know, sort of base, sort of like malt bill. Excuse me. So it was a little bit of a hybrid of the two, which I did not really know. I did not figure that out on my own. I had to do a little bit of Googling to figure that out. But I had no idea what I wanted to brew for this project brew. Uh, and then one day I was thinking, oh, the Miami Vice um, from Great Lakes I had, oh, I don't know how many years ago, didn't get on the channel um, those many years ago. And I'm like, that was a really cool beer. Let's do a white IPA. I know that's that the Miami Vice was a white pale ale. Why not just, you know, bump it up a bit? So, was enjoying a few white IPAs, you know, here and there. I think uh, was the Exchange has one. And then, oh, why is it escaping me? It's like Birch Bark or something like that. Uh, not the brewery, but the name of the beer. I forget who that's by. It's going to bug me a little bit, but had those two beers. And I was like, hmm, you know what? Let's, let's figure something out. So... Uh, can I share my screen with this? I do not think I can because I'm just using the very basic, um, what do you call this? Basic, oh, what do you call this? Basic, uh, YouTube live thing. I don't even know if I have audio. I would assume so. Let's just double check. Double check on my laptop over to the side of me. Yep, cool. I we got audio. That's dope. That's good to know. Um, where was I? Where was I? Um, so yeah, the white IPA. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I want to do at least. And I have to figure out this recipe in like the next two, two to three days at latest. Because I gotta do a pilot brew, I gotta do my own pilot brew. I gotta do a little test um, at home, home brewing, um, and I have to do that brew uh, this Saturday, and I have to get all the ingredients by Friday, because being here in Toronto and you know, or you know, Ontario, we're in lockdown, so nothing's open. It's very hard to get stuff. Uh, went like at a freer time, so I gotta order it. And figured out all that rigmarole, rigmarole shit. Let's tell you what I got uh, for a base right now for for the uh, for the recipe. Um, There's going to be about a 60, 60 to sixty five ish post, uh, you know, you know, like straight uh, batch size into the fermenter brew. Uh, we have about eight kilograms of pilsner malt. Uh, we have seven kilograms of torrified wheat. Because uh, when I was reading uh, with with 
wet beers and whatnot and white IPAs. Uh, if you use uh, just straight up unmalted wheat, uh, you'll have to do you know, like step mash, uh, step mashing where you you know you heat your mash up to a certain temperature, hold it, heat it up again to another temperature, hold it, heat it up again, hold it, yada yada. I don't want to deal with that shit. And I read that um, if you use either torrefied or flaked wheat, you can just do a single uh, infusion mash, which for uh, for my skill level at the moment, I'm more comfortable with. So we're going with a single infusion. Uh, so yeah, eight grams, or eight grams, eight kilograms of Pilsner, seven kilograms of torrefied wheat, two kilograms of honey malt to give it a little bit of a, uh, you know, different flavor and then finishing off with i'm aiming for about 1.5 kilograms of flaked oats for body um the percentages on that is 43.2 percent pilsner 37.8 uh, torrified wheat 10.8 honey malt and 8.1 percent of flaked oats for the hops that's another question uh that i have is it's not high on the ibu sort of a scale for this white IPA. I'm looking right now on Brewer's Friend, it's gonna be about 5.7, 5.77 IBUs. That is hella low for what I'm kind of aiming for. So I wanna figure out what early edition hops to use without that early edition hop becoming, or giving off flavors that would taste like shit. So right now I have about 141.75 grams of Pacifica, uh, at five minutes, five minutes till the end of the uh, boil, and then also another 141.75 grams of citra right at uh, flame out, giving a lot of flavor, uh, hoppy goodness flavor, tropical notes and whatnot, and then, um, but but real no, no, no bittering. I'm kind of bugged about it. I'm also having a beer right now. I'm having Hazen and Confused from Muskoka Brewery. Because I haven't had this beer in a while, and you know what? I was thinking I've been trying not to drink uh, beers or really anything throughout the weekdays. Uh, but being it's my birthday and all, why not? So cheers. Looks like I'm low. Let me go wash this out. I'll grab another one. We'll, we'll keep we'll keep going through this process. Me. Now, this isn't going to be a beer review by any means, but I did find something at the beer store today, something new, something I saw a glimpse of, I think, on Instagram, but never really looked upon but molson common bond lager in partnership with jp weiser's 6.1 percent brewed with whiskey aged hops never heard of whiskey aged hops before but okay okay i'm a little nervous it's molson canadian for one and then jp weiser's whiskey aged hops Sounds weird as shit. Don't. Okay. Also, I have headphones in because I want to play music, and um, YouTube does not like music, so I get to enjoy. Um, you guys just play music on your side things. Uh, looking at it, a little bit of a darker golden almost ambery color, extremely clear. Uh, big head on that particular pour there. We'll get to that in the uh, in a hot minute. But yeah, as uh, continuing on with the um, with the recipe, um, also want to. I'm debating. I know I want to throw in coriander. Debating on the bitter orange peel. Don't know about the weights on those yet. Still got to do a little bit more research. Which I'm going to do now, or you know, during this. 
but also my teacher was like, hey, what about chamomile? Because since this, since a wet IPA is partially a IPA and partially a wit beer, uh, I was trying to get, gauge where I kind of wanted to take this beer. Uh, do I want it more wit forward or do I want it more IPA forward? And I said I wanted it more IPA forward compared to wit. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for thanks for popping in for a hot minute. How's it going? Predicting Alpha. Cheers, guys. currently trying to figure out the project beer that I want to do for this semester and I figured why not just do it live so one I can have something to look back to and it's just random content very on the fly shit yeah like I said we're doing a white IPA I'm just trying to figure out I'm good with the malts that I'm using in here the uh, flavor hops I'm pretty solid on it's just uh, what, what I'm at a crossroads that is what kind of spices I want to use. I want to use coriander because that always comes out real well. Um, looking at chamomile as well. Are you bringing? Yes, yes. Fresh batches will be uh, will be available. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, I also have to put uh, put aside some beers for uh, for you guys from my uh, most recent homebrew. Uh, should be finishing up this. Uh, th this Saturday, actually, uh, it's a it's a saison that that I uh, brewed up with uh, with Richie. How do you pick the ingredients? Um, personally, I go onto this website called Brewers Friend, and I search up um, like the, the same style that I want to do, and try to figure and try to go to the same uh, batch size of other people's uh, that they post, and I kind of pick and choose. What I want from their beers. So they're uh, the list. Say I want to brew an IPA. Go to Brewers Friend, type in IPA, search recipes, and then um, I kind of get a ballpark of what ingredients, whether they're the malts or the hops, and then I sort of pick and choose the ones that I kind of want um, to go. And it's sort of it's sort of not copying, but um, you see what other people have done and just take little aspects of theirs and make your own thing. What's the most important for developing a good palate for beer? Uh, drink. Definitely, definitely drink. Um, not, not only just drink, but for me, I find, just find a place where you can drink and actually focus on the beer. Um, at a bar is a terrible place because there's so much outside noise. It's gonna fuck with your uh, fuck with your palate. Funny enough, um, but if you're at home and you have a beer, crack open a beer. Doesn't matter what kind it is, and drink it, and really focus in on the taste. And funny enough, you will start picking stuff out over time. Um, this is a brand new beer that I've just poured. Common Bond Lager. Never had it before. Be honest, this might be a bad example, but it's like a watered down, watered. I don't know. It's between medicinal, like a honey medicinal thing, and yeah, watered down honey medicinal, and real and like salted caramel. Don't know where that came from, but over time, you sort of just start picking random shit up. Uh, have you found a beer? Ooh, beer spirit LCBO beer that you would rate one out of ten. I'm pretty sure I don't remember if there was a one out of ten uh, in my vast array of beers. Um, ones that come to mind would definitely be like your old Milwaukee's. I don't think I gave them a one out of ten. I think I gave them maybe a two out of ten. Um, but old Milwaukee's, the old Milwaukee ice is fucking terrible. Old Milwaukee Ice is, um, you take a beer, you spit in it, maybe somebody gets a little bit of fart in there, um, and then pees in it, uh, like a lot. That is terrible garbage beer. For the price, it's, n see, yeah, the Reds, the Reds are fine. The Reds, okay, the Reds aren't the best at all. They're fairly close to the ice, but the Milwaukee Ice, fucking nasty. 
Yeah, I like, I like the old Milwaukee, the uh, the big fucking can too. You can find it some of them. I think they're like seven, ten mils for what's like three bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're not good beers. I mean, if you're looking for cheap beer, Laker, Laker Ice, Laker Red. It's it's still not great beer, but it's not bad beer. It's just it's just okay beer. But for two dollars a can, hell yeah. Anytime I take Laker Red if I'm boozing on a budget, that or you know a forty of Old E, because you can't you can't go wrong with a forty of Old E. Mm hmm. That and actually, what's not too bad is a uh, uh, Cool Beer does a four pack of uh, of three fifty five ml cans for it's like six bucks flat. They're uh, Cool Beer Blonde Lager. Not bad at all. Um, again, nothing super, uh, super, super tasty, but it doesn't taste like cheap beer. It's just simple, straight up. This is beer. It's six bucks for a four pack. You know what? You get eight of those. You got a good night. You got, you got a solid, quick, uh, quick little night. But yeah, that's that's definitely on the cheap beer scale. Holy shit! This. And this this recipe thing is stressing me. I got more, I, every time I message my teacher about about my uh, recipe. There's more questions. Now I'm looking at chamomile to use in here. Chamomile apparently because one it adds it's he he described it as a uh, a secret weapon for wheat beers. And what I've been reading, it gives you a little bit of that orange flavor, but also just like a little wisp of honey, which actually really works well with the the honey malt that I want to use in here. <laughs> <clears throat> but also chamomile apparently has medicinal qualities and possibly even more intoxicating qualities uh, if it's fermented. So if I can get a, you know, a funky intoxicating beer, why not? My question is, though, um, do I use dry product or do I brew sort of like a, a tea and then add that into the uh, kettle before it goes to fermentation or, or what? Then the other one is also mint. I want to add a little bit of mint in this bad boy. Um, but mint can be kind of tricky because it can really overtake a lot of the other flavors of a beer. Uh, so I got a – he told me that I should use, again, sort of like a mint tea sort of thing. Why would you make the tea first? See, that's the thing. I don't know. I know with the mint edition, uh, cold steep tea is recommended because it has less um, – of a mint impact so it wouldn't take over the flavors as far as the chamomile though i don't know i don't know i've, I've been doing a little bit of research uh, before this live stream and people were saying they use dry chamomile uh like leaves and whatnot or they did make it like steep a sort of tea thing um so i'm kind of wanting to ask that question which one would be best uh to bring out you know the chamomile flavors but not you know overstep any of the uh, flavors of the hops or the malts of the beer so and i gotta know those fast i gotta go i gotta know that information uh asap again i've never worked with any of this i've never brewed a beer personally or um back in first and second semester when they were already pre-made recipes and never worked with this i haven't really seen any um any information on um, chamomile or mint before and how they're actually uh, utilized uh, in brewing a beer. So it's uh, it's like all hands on deck tonight. I think I have just enough time to squeeze at least some good work into this uh, little endeavor here. It's just trying to hard. It's, it's kind of hard trying to find recipes that have brewed the same volume that I'm looking for just to get sort of um, an average uh, of uh, like an average weight or timing of when to incorporate these um, these products in. What did this guy do? I'm looking at somebody else's. They did a wet beer, but for coriander and orange peel, they used... 30 grams and 70 grams. I just don't know what that is in ounces. Excuse me. Is uh, 
Did, did, did the other half of Predicting Alpha get back? To, uh, to Waterloo? By any chance? Uh... Some five ounces, two grams. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, glad he's back. Glad he's back for sure. So did he, did he have any, uh, what the hell happened here? You have any input on the uh, new uh, new studio, or is that all you? The hell happened to my laptop? Oh, that's taking a shit. Yeah. Coriander. Thirty G's ish. Hmm. Trying to figure out what's next. Waiting on the coriander waits from another classmate, actually, who, uh, they used coriander in their brew, uh, last semester, so I'm trying to get a ballpark number on that. The hmm. white IPA hop regime. I think that might be an okay, uh, Okay, we are trying to figure out the uh, the hop methods for this. Hmm. All right, IPA hop regime. Let's see what they say. Nice. Yeah, yo, I I saw them like this. Sean doing that all on his own? Jeez. D -d -d Didn't know you were a big handyman. <laughs> no, but seriously, it looks uh it looks pretty stellar. I uh I may need uh, some tips for for back home, but I don't think I need to do too much. <laughs> well, you know, if you didn't, you know, bust any electrical uh, wires or gas lines or you know saw off a finger I think you're doing pretty good <laughs> yeah trust me I'm not a big handyman either yeah <laughs> the most recent I guess handiwork that I did was uh, put in uh, put in the dartboard and cabinet um, after Christmas in the basement um, that was well that and I helped Andre hook up a uh, giant like oh geez i don't know how long of a projector huge massive like 50 pound uh projector screen up in his room that was the most handy work i've done in a long time other than that fuck it i'm gonna hire somebody if it's if, if it's too big of a job but redesigning a room like that that's something uh definitely a task that would be really cool to complete one day sadly you know, living with the parents, there's only so much you can do. So I, I envy you guys for your for that sort of freedom. Uh, let's see. How in the process? I'm looking now at how to. Br oh, this is just a general IPA. No, I want a white IPA. Recipe. A lot of these recipes, when you look up, are just looking up general information. Um, they focus a lot more on the malts rather than uh, the hop regime, it seems. I don't know. Okay, maybe I can figure that out. Okay. That was fun, and I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, man. Doing anything like that, like changing up a scene... Uh, or like your 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 workspace, it's always a lot of fun. Even if they're like little minor changes, you're just like, yeah, this is this is it. This is what I need. I haven't done that in a while. I've been looking in my basement trying to figure out how I wanna 
move stuff around, but just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Just haven't found a, uh, a new way to do it. Uh, or at least figure out a perfect method for it. But hey, always thinking in the back of my mind. But hopefully, um, hopefully uh, by next year, or um, you know, before, or just after I turn 27, so a year from now, or whatever, um, have enough money saved up to actually, you know, move out. Changing up the lighting has been cool. Yeah, did you use the um, like, like the, the RGB like LED strips, or I feel that seems to be like the the, the big craze right now, or. All those LED strips. Excuse me. Hops at ten. Meant to get by view. I think I figured out uh, how to boost up the the IBUs of this beer. Add a hop addition at about ten minutes, just to just so that that addition does not. Um, transmit any weird off flavors during the boil but enough time left on the boil to add more um bitterness units have those two lights on the ceiling that point at the walls it's like okay okay nice nice it's definitely uh definitely sounds pretty good i'll have to you guys should do a room tour like when it's like all said and done, I just like an like an offshoot video, just be like predicting alpha reimagined. I don't know, like a stu studio studio little like uh, a little, little walkthrough. I think that would be really cool. I don't know why I I love those style of videos. Uh, when I'm watching somebody for a long time, I'm just like I want to see what their workspace looks like, because it's just like damn, I want to see the environment that you know. Where, where, where are the contents made? I think that would be a really cool little idea. Mash times. 90 minutes to 60. You should be healthy and complete conversion. Boys, usually let's just get 15 minutes to extract. Yeah. Or for 15 to 20. Okay. Okay, not too bad. That could be good. Yep. Take care, Sean. Uh, th thanks for hopping in. Thanks for the question, man. I appreciate it. Cheers. Hopefully we get together uh, sooner rather than later. Okay. So like I was saying, I think I got I think I got a decent hop idea for this recipe. I'm gonna throw in a 10 minute um a 10 minute edition got to figure that out what to throw in there i have a book here somewhere nope it falls on my foot that's cool ow um what am I looking at here? So I got my my brewer's journal with all my notes of all the beer recipes I've been doing. I don't want to crack this bad boy open and see if I can find. So what was I using? I was using Pacifica and Citra. Pacifica. Is an aroma hop, so that wouldn't work. It has aromas of orange and citrus. Um, and then I was also using citra, which is a all-purpose hop. So you could use it both for, you know, um, bittering, aroma, and flavor. Citra gives very fruity, strong tropical aromas and flavors. But now i got to look for a an aroma hop. But enough aroma to throw in, throw in some IBUs without being overly in your face. So 
Where do I start? Going for more U.S. style hops uh, compared to, you know, your U.K.'s or your Germans, even though I think Pacifica is a New Zealand hop. Yeah, Pacifica is a New Zealand hop, but, hey, it's got orange and citrus. Should be, yeah, should be a nice little addition. I want to find a decent hop. Well, let's see what other people have done on Brewer's Friend if we go to beer recipes. Shoot over a wet beer because they seem to be okay. Peaches and melons. That's an interesting name. Let's see what they did. I wish I could play music here, guys. I'm sorry. There's so many. There's so much dead noise. That's that's kind of why I like um, Twitch a little better because the playlist that I use is used by another streamer. Um, he said use the playlist whenever you want, and uh, it's more DMCA um, approved in a sense, or you know, not hindered by that. So I may move these back over to Twitch. Um, in the future, I think that'd be kind of cool. Cool melon. Oh, another use. I want a a ten minute hop. Nope. I want fjord and fjella. Sunset with. Let's see what they did here. What did you guys do for the hop regime? Everything's either really early or really late, but I don't want to go really early because it's just got scared for a minute from uh, what my teacher said about one of them. But I do want a bittering hop. Let me just ask him and say, is there a bittering hop to use in these white IPAs? Oh, this is too confusing sometimes. Ales, lagers, no, I want American ales, IPAs, no, and we're going to go, ooh, flowery, flowery, and citrus. I use the flowery and the hoppy in the uh, coriander. Ooh, so one with maybe tea. One and... No, that works too. No. Don't want that. Go. I want this. Goose from Polyphia. Polyphia? I don't know. Go check it out. Fucking sick. Ah, uh, what do I use for a... So I had Summit, but he said Summit was going to give off, oh, what did he say was going to give off? Garlic. There was like a 30% chance of garlic, and nope, do not want that. Again, that was giving off more of that orangey citrusy vibe. And I'm not a big fan of this beer. Molson Common Bond Lager. It's just it's like a lager with um, more caramelly, toffee, and like a weird sweet alcohol note. It's fine and it's interesting, but not, not that good. Chinook. Oh, this got raisin bitterness. I don't want raisins. All right, maybe we have to go with German for the bittering hops. What do we do? What if 
I did a hollered how middle frill. Um, do I have that in for uh, available for me? Because Niagara doesn't have a ton. Of, they have actually a, a fairly solid array of hops to use. But I'm wondering if I use some Hollertow middle fruit in the beginning uh, to get, excuse me, to get, to get, you know, some bitterness to the beer because it says it's herbal, it has an herbal aroma, it's mild and pleasant. No, we do not have Hollertau Middle Fruit, but we do have Hollertau. And I don't know if that's uh, American or German. That is more spicy. Spicy could work. But I do not think so. Helga, what is Helga? Oh, this aroma, her busker. Don't have that in here. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh my lord. Magnum bittering. Ooh. Okay. Oh, magnum. Spicy flavor, bitter, slightly citrusy aroma, spicy, bitter. Okay, so between the two, because there's two varieties of Magnum that I've seen in my book, we got the German uh, version and then the U.S. version. The German version is a spicy flavor and bitter, um, but if I don't use a ton, could get away with it, hopefully. And the U.S. Magnum adds a slightly citrusy aroma, which would be good, would fall in line but I'm worried about that spicy and bitter note. I have another question for my teacher at the moment. Can I erase this? Oh, was it? Uh, what hop to use to gain IBUs and and early or late or ten men. Edition. So I got another question from my teacher. If she watches this, or well, obviously shoot him an email. Um, is I'm looking for another hop to add some IBU, some bitterness to this beer. Not a lot, not a lot at all. But for right now where it's standing, it's still a little low. Um, See, so yeah, I don't think maybe a beginning edition like right in the 60 minutes of 60 to 40 minute edition but maybe like a 15 to 10 minute edition to add some you know bitterness and a little bit of flavor or aroma but not be too much in your face to keep the beer at a, at a fairly you know regular um i guess Status standard. Why are there so many more questions than I have answers to with this? Three three. Nice Good job, Shane. <laughs> Why'd you just snap? <laughs> Funny guy playing beer pong. That's a good thing, I guess, about uh, these online courses. Is that for the most part here? I can. I just need to roll out of bed and turn on my computer, 
or if I'm super lazy, just open up my laptop, throw it in bed with me, and uh, you get to listen. Yeah, I want to get some IBUs on this beer. Like for me, at least, at least like 20, at least 20 IBUs. I know the Pacific and Citra, I think are going to work absolutely fantastic. The, um, I may not use the bitter orange peel if the, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh, good lord, what was that? Um, coriander adds that bit. Can I do a search of spices? Yeah, browse other ingredients. Coriander would be nice. Calcium, candum tablets, no, no. Chamomile, nope. This should be, co not coriander, chamomile. That's what I'm looking for, right? Yeah, chamomile, my bad. Finding, we need it for flavor. Chamomile tea? 105. Uh, Whip beer, 10 recipes. Average use is 6%. Usage rates is 1 to 98. Okay, yeah. No, this just tells me where it's used. That's cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. Um, hmm. Where to go, where to find, what to do. That doesn't help me at all. Okay, I got rid of the washroom. I got to take a hot minute off this. Okay, I'm back. Again, more questions and answers on this. Jeez, what the hell do I do? Hmm. <laughs> I need answers Wednesday latest. Many answers by Wednesday the latest. And I'm kind of ticked. I wish I wish I started this early. I did start this early, but did not know. I was gonna. I was gonna be this far, but it's difficult. Um, trying to, because this this is a lot riding on it. There's a lot riding on this beer, and the fact that I have to do a test batch so much sooner than, um, than the actual brew really bugs me. And even that's cutting it fairly close. I should have brewed last weekend or this past weekend, like yesterday or two days ago but I did not. 
because I wasn't ready. And that's that's the thing. Oh my god, this beard is bad. I did not do anything with this this monstrous hobo looking monstrosity on my face. Good lord, look at that. Ugh. Ugh. Look at that. There's my chin. <laughs> uh, I really gotta do the beard. Gotta do it tomorrow. Fuck. Fucking A. I'm happy with the malts. I'm very happy with the malts. Because right now, we're with the malts and the, the, the yeast that I wanted to use is a New England yeast, we're looking at about an ABV average of 6.96. From Brewer's Friend, that is, in my experience, not highly accurate. Um, I want to say there's maybe a one degree, like 1% difference in terms of going down. There's no, it's never gone up for me. It's always gone down about 1%. So if I'm look, I'm looking at realistically with my experience so thus far is about a 6% beer, uh, 6 to 7% beer, I want to say with this, with this, uh, malt bill here. We're really worrying about the hops and the other ingredients. I have another classmate. Uh, she's she's going to get back to me on the coriander side of things. She's going to be very intrigued about the chamomile. Chamomile. It was chamomile, right? Please tell me. Yeah, chamomile. Chamomile and beer. Oh, chamomile beer. Beer advocate. How do you feel about chamomile in beer? Some say it's used in certain wit beers. If it's distinct, you use too much. Home brewers have been using it for a long time. Yet, uh, chamomile has been used, it seems to be, a fair bit, even before hops were a big thing in beer. Um, somebody used way too much. So this is just yummy. What's this? Is the link dead or is it still alive? This link is alive. I like that. Let's see what this is. Uh, this looks to be a recipe per se or almost. Of uh, Birificio del Ducato from Italy. Use spicy due oh surprisingly spicy due to you due to the use of wildflowers, caramel, coriander, green peppercorn, and ginger. Not really what I'm looking for, but let's see what they did. Uh, beers and vibes, blah blah blah. Anything information wise that I could use? Not really. Nope. Uh, about format? Nope. No. Nope. That doesn't do it. Let's see, this is a longer post. Let's see what they say. From a beer drinker perspective, we all have our own unique preferences. Um, for brewers, the trick is how much of a given spice herb to use and how to use that spice and herb at the end of boil as a dry hop, etc. Combination of, of amount and method of use will have a significant effects on the resulting beer. I'm not aware. Uh, beer specifically brew with caramel. Okay, well, that's cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it for wasting my time. Um, and me down. Do -do -do. Please don't let me down. Not a come around. Uh, what? Okay, no, don't want to talk about camel tea. Um, forms are great, but sometimes forms are really shitty because they do not give you the kind of information you're looking for. So we're going to move on. What is the best technique 
to add chamomile. Here we go. Let's see. Somebody said they made a wet beer with tangerine and, and uh, tangerine peel and coriander. Uh, they said chamomile is a secret ingredient. So I have a few options. This guy says add it directly to secondary, aka a, akin to dry hopping, maybe after a little boiling to avoid introducing bacteria. Make some chamomile teal and tea and add that at boiling and make a spice potion with vodka Ooh, I like and add that at a boiling time the question is which is most likely to impart the best taste and secondarily aroma and how much would you suggest for a five gallon batch i want it to still taste like beer not chamomile tea we'd like to impart some reasonable amounts of flavor to the result concerns i respectfully have for the questions are I'm not sure the essence will get relate released without boiling. I've seen other recommendations for this, but some complaining the results were too strong. See, yeah, that's kind of my thing too, is that I want to throw in this chamomile, but I don't want it to be overpowering. I don't want any of these spices to be overpowering. I may even just drop the mint. That seems a little too risky and like, like I said, I have money riding on this. I don't just go the straight route and just figure out coriander or orange peel, make it very simple. But at the same time, I kind of want to fuck around and find out. Somebody says, go with tea, extract the flavor, and sanitize the chamomile. It's the one thing, too. You want to make it, you know, sanitized. Okay. Belgian wood, how much chamomile tea? I'm considering adding some chamomile to this. They're talking about a Belgian wheat. In particular, I'm just considering taking two chamomile tea bags and adding it at flame out until it chills down enough to where I can pitch it into the carboy. So. Have a scallop of jute for about one to two ounces. You want just a hint in there, just to, to make people wonder what it is that they're tasting. Unless you really like chamomile, and all means the amount uh, means by all that by all means up the amount a little. Off the top of my head, I don't know how much in a tea, uh, is in a tea bag by weight. So it seems to me. That if we're just focusing on chamomile at the moment, uh, you want just a little bit at flame out. Not much. Okay. And whole flour. You don't want to boil the chamomile. Okay, so what do I have back for questions for chamomile? What kind of chamomile? Dry product or tea? When to add it is the best practice. Waiting is definitely going to be a thing. Where's my pencil? Here we go. Um. So thinking again at the end of the boil. I'm just going to ask one just best, best practice here. Boil. Best or, you know, most common method. Mint, I know, want to, I know my teacher said mint tea. So I'm just wondering when that would go and would that go in? Okay, that's okay. And what hop to gain IBUs uh, as an early or 10 minute addition? I think that's kind of where I'm wanting to go with this. If I can get answers to each of those and then get my classmate uh, when they're, when they get back to me about the addition of coriander. 
I think by Wednesday, we might have something. Now, this may not seem like I'm getting somewhere um, during this past almost hour. But from where I'm sitting right now, it seems like that I am. I'm, I'm going to drop the bitter orange peel out of my recipe. I want to wait on the coriander, but I want to add chamomile to here. I don't know what I know. I don't know. I don't know how much or what. Um, just going in the boil. I want to assume, and then mint, mint tea. They don't have a thing for mint, do they? What about? Pepper? No, no. Spear? No, I don't have that. Okay, we're gonna leave that up on the uh, recipe uh, sheet for now. That's cool. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so I have some questions. I have some answers, and I think that's where we're gonna end this off. It, it didn't seem like it got through a lot today, but. I think I've figured out a decent amount of questions uh, to 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 uh, to shoot back at my teacher. Um, some headway on this. Hopefully by Wednesday, I can uh, put an order in for the homebrew side of things and get some sort of uh, you know some sort of headway on the homebrew uh, aspect of this. Because realistically, I just want the homebrew aspect to be. You know, put the, the order put in, all that shit, you know, uh, said and done with, um, test that out, and then I'll have some time in between the homebrew's finish and the um, the full brew. So I think we're going to be okay with that. So with that said, guys, I think that's where I'm going to wrap up this little live stream. Gone for almost an hour. Enjoyed a beer with you guys. Again, like I said, not too sure what's what's going on with this brew. 100% made a lot of headway. Have more questions to ask. We're good to go on that regard. Again, wanting to use chamomile because uh, doing that little bit of research to add some nice flavors, I want to say. And I like those med that medicinal quality aspect uh, to it. And almost what somebody said, I've only heard one comment on it. was some other intoxicating effects possibly. Kind of cool. Doubt that would really happen uh, with the use that I'm going for, but something to note. The mint edition would be kind of cool. Again, I'm going to be very, very, uh, very reserved with that mint edition. Maybe just like a, ooh, just like, just put it in. Even if it doesn't show up, I'm going to be fine because, like my teacher said, and see what like I've heard before, is that mint editions can be very. Oh, they can get away from you pretty quick. And the other one is definitely that hop, that extra hop edition I want to put in. Um, I, I, I don't know about the early hop edition, uh, but maybe on that like 5, 10, 15 minute mark or 15 to 10 minute mark before uh, Flame Out um, should gain some IBUs uh, without uh, bringing in any off flavors to the beer. But with that said, guys, that's going to do it for me, mate, Broski. I'm happy to do another live stream. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be back. It's, it's been it's been far too long. I took up a lot of a lot of time from it. But, hey, this is where we're at. So with that said, guys, thanks for joining me. Thank you for predicting Alpha, Sean. Thanks for uh, hopping in asking some asking some questions and chatting for a little bit. Appreciate it. Anybody else watching, go check out Predicting Alpha for all your, you know, what do they do? Oh, they have a whole program going on um like like day trading stocks uh, options puts calls all that stuff that i don't fully understand but from uh from, from what i've heard from them is that they're doing they're doing a fantastic job and i've seen them work uh firsthand and goddamn the grind for them is real so with all that said guys that's gonna go for me first like i say crack a beer and enjoy i will see you hopefully 
you know what? Next time I when I get a response from my teacher and we get some more headway on this, I'll get back to you with this. Let's make this the new live stream uh, sort of story. The start of the brew of the project brew to the end of the project brew. Thanks for joining. Cheers, guys. I'll see you later.